Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon. All right, and welcome to the Vanu Podcast. Got a uh, special Patreon-only episode coming for you. I uh, just got just uh, got done recording an episode, uh, I guess tentatively titled, at least uh, for for the moment, uh, the problems or I guess the, the struggles in building a community. Um, so uh, if you haven't uh, listened to that, definitely go uh, check that out first. Or this might be a confusing episode without context. Uh, you can just yeah find that patreon.com forward slash Vanu. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to uh, you know give you a little uh, gossip and, and you know insight into uh, what's what's going on. Uh, there's uh, it's been it's been pretty crazy in just uh, just a couple of months. So uh, anyway, uh, Jason uh, Hensis, and you're the one who's uh, most familiar with these these people that I'm not. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you're familiar with uh, with these people a lot more than I am. So I'll turn it over to you now. Uh, you know, give us the rundown. But I will say. Um, you know, let's keep it to like, you know, 30 minutes tops, probably more like 15, 20 minutes since this is a bonus episode. Um, yeah, don't need to go on for like 45 minutes like Kyle would um, with some things like these. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Kyle, yeah, I've, I've texted Kyle. We're going to get back to recording at some point. Obviously, have been saying that for like three months. But anyway, Henza, take it away, my good sir. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, hey, guys. So, basically... I really wanted to come here. I worked really hard to get here. I got my wife down here. She wasn't very happy about being with, uh, being with coming to Acapulco. She doesn't like warm weather in Mexico. And we moved into this guy's house named Mob Probe down here. Uh, came highly recommended. Uh, pretty, pretty tall, flamboyant type of character, I guess you have to say, with a really deep voice and a uh, big old scruffy beard. And... Um, you know, my wife and him started to get along as friends, and I, I saw this and I liked it. I'm like, okay, so she's going to make a friend down here. Everything's fine. Uh, my wife and I, we have been together for 17 years. Everything is going okay. Yeah, every marriage has its struggles and its trials, and we were going through a tiny trial period, and uh, it, it wasn't all roses. And uh, uh, basically, they, they started hanging out all the time, and I was okay with that. There was nothing wrong with that. And he started telling me, yeah, I'm red pilling her. So she's starting, she was a devout status. She always want. she always, she never wanted to leave the state. She always loved status. And she started to come around in his mind to the ideas and principles of liberty. And so they, they were talking a lot and he was feeding me information, telling me to say stuff to her. And this is going to like make her happy or make her think that she might want to live here a little bit here and there. I'm like, okay, well, I'll give it a go. So I tried it and lo I didn't know this, but he was driving a wedge between me and my ex-wife. And um, he was just feeding me information. It was just, just uh, triggering her and making her more and more angry until she finally got to the point where she's fed up with me. And uh, when we finally get back to the state, she left me. And uh, she came back down here to live with him. Uh, and that's not his first kind of offense in trying to break up relationships. He did it with uh, the outlaw couple, John and Lily. Uh, he. he he kept trying to break those two up. Lily wasn't having it though. She wasn't that stupid. Um, so like he and uh, Casey and Shay, uh, a couple that had moved down here would live with them for a part time. He also started to mess with their relationship too while he was here with them and um, while they were living with him. And that was, that was a little absurd. You don't walk into a couple's bedroom naked telling them that you want to have sex and you know, uh, that you think that they're Jeez. your mom and dad. Like, he was just like, he, he had a terrible God complex. He, he started to lose his shit after a while. And, uh, yeah, it, it got really ugly. My, my ex-wife is here specifically to punish me uh, because 
she knew this would make me happy coming here and living here. So she didn't want me to come here to be happy. So she tried to draw, uh, drive up as much turmoil as possible. Uh, and it did. It, it worked. Uh, I was in a lot of pain for about a year. Uh, now, like, I'm completely over it. And I just want to get the divorce I'm with and, um, you know, kind of cut that part of my life off and move on. And, uh, you know, that's one of the individuals in this community that you really don't want to bring your spouse around and you really don't want to be friends with because you know he's going to eventually hurt somebody else in the future because he has repetitive behavior with this whole thing. Um, his name's Mob Probe or Nathan Hort, one of the creators of uh, BitShares. And uh, yeah, he's just got a, a, a massive ego. And uh, it, it shows a lot of times in, in the functions that he goes to and the way he talks to people and stuff like that. Uh, that may be someone that you want to avoid in the future. I don't want to make up your mind for you, but these are, this is one of the people that uh, me and John and Lily have decided to say, okay, if you're friends with him, we're no longer going to be a friend. It's not like we're going to be mean to those people out in public, but we're not going to go out of our way to, you know, we're going to be cordial to them and be nice and make small talk, but we're not going to be deep, philosophical, you know, like I, I had so many close friends here that decided to split the community and stay friends with Mob Probe after all of that. Um, uh, another individual down here that you guys want to be watch out for is uh, Paul Proker. Uh, he he's he's smarter than he looks and sounds. Um, he's been able to survive here for two years with barely paying any rent and taking advantage of every single person that he's been uh, living with. And uh, he, he kind of like gets in desperation mode. Uh, he, he starts to um, uh, just act crazy and woes me and the world doesn't like me type of stuff. And everybody takes pity on him and they always try to help out, myself included. Um, and he's, he's a very coercive individual. Um, he's, he's, that's his first step is if things don't go his way, he starts to coerce people. You know, uh, for instance, uh, he sexually assaulted uh, mine and Jason's friend. Uh, I'm not going to say her name, mm -hmm. um, but he, he sexually assaulted our friend, apologized to her uh, in the middle of the apologies, paused his apology to tell her to give me a message about how much he hates me because I, I kicked him out of my house and I had been calling him out. I, I've been trying to separate him from the community so he stops hurting people because he's He's hurt like five or six, eight people down here. Probably, yeah, about eight people. You know, uh, he, he's violated eight people down here in one way or another, whether it's threats, coercion, stealing from them. Uh, he really hasn't committed many acts of violence. Uh, the biggest thing he's ever done is like shove somebody and try to start a fight. But mainly he just tells you he's going to like uh, kill you or hurt you or kill your family or some shit like that. Like whatever. I, I, I rarely ever listen to it anymore. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Matter of fact, uh, Pauly Propert, Oh no, Polly Pro on Steemit. He actually has Steemit articles uh, written up threatening me and a few mm -hmm. other community members here. He, uh, so, he blamed her. He like he yeah. wrote one where he blamed her for him yeah, sexually like, assaulting her. Yeah, like he he minimized oh. it. This is his his response after he apologized to her, and he didn't like her response to the apology. He says, "Honestly, I don't give a shit about what you think of me after this whole thing. The statutes of limitations of making me feel better over. Good luck." That's what he told someone who he sexually assaulted. And uh, the Kokesh bus had problems with him. Uh, you know, he offered to kill my ex-wife for money. He kept harassing me. Actually, it wasn't just an offer. It was harassing me to kill my ex-wife for money, which I wasn't interested in because that's not justice. That's not anything. That's just garbage. Uh, she had a large life insurance, or insurance policy on her. And for the three weeks that he lived with me, um, he, like, basically every other day or every three days, he bothered me about it because he wanted to get paid. And he said he'd kill her for money. And I, I thought that was like the most garbage thing. And uh, immediately when he started doing that, I, I decided that I needed to leave Acapulco for a little while and went back to the States. Um, Use my mother's birthday as a great excuse. <laughs> great. But uh, yeah, like, uh, so the community is kind of split in two um, uh, about these individuals. There, there's another individual uh, I, I can't talk about just yet. But he came down here with a big idea, and he racked up a lot of debt with people, asked everybody to work for him, and he's never paid them. Or he has paid them, but very little. Uh, and he owes them a lot of money, and he's refused to do that. 
I'm hoping that this year he comes down here and makes good on the payment and actually delivers the product that he was like telling people is going to deliver. Uh, but he hasn't done that so far. So I'm a little wary about this person is going to be on the, the pay no mind list uh, going forward as well. Um, you know, but, when John Lilly, John and Lily set down the rules first, I wanted to back it immediately emotionally, but I felt I was too emotional about backing the whole, I'm not going to be your friend if you're friends with these people, because I felt like it was like a little socially coercive. But uh, eventually I felt like it was the best thing to do after talking to a few people, that it was the most peaceful way to route these people out of the community mm -hmm. and stop the perpetuation of them being able to take advantage or hurt people in the future. And uh, that, that's the route we have taken. Um, unfortunately, you know, um, they have their own side of the story and they, they, they try to twist it in whatever way they do. But I, I've never hurt anybody. You know, I have a clean record. I, I followed the principles of liberty all the way through. So, you know, they, they try to make things seem like I, I've done something, but I've never done anything to hurt anybody down here or back home in the States uh, since I found the principles of liberty. Uh, so basically, that's what's going on in this community that's kind of like stirred this topic up. How do you deal with these people going forward? Uh, what's the best course of action? And the threats are so, so persistent. It's almost like you want to take vigilanteism. In your mm -hmm. And it, it's really sad. It, it's been going on with Pauly Pro. Now, Mod Probe, he's been quiet the whole time. He's been really quiet. I'm not even big on like telling people, hey, if you're friends with Mod Probe, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. But on the other hand, he did tear my ham family in half or did contribute to tearing my family in half and um, and uh, basically ruining 17 years of work that I put into my life. It, it basically, a third of my life just went down the drain. And half my wife's ex-wife's life went down the drain because of, you know, some of the games that he used to play with us. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm not that big on him. Paul Propert, on the other hand, I, I, I'm pretty adamant that mm -hmm. if you're friends with him, I can't be your friend. You know, like, it's it's not a slight against you, personally. It's just that Paul is just so coercive and so he doesn't fit in so much that he needs to be routed out at all costs. Uh, Mob Trump sitting up in his mansion, not reaching out to people, doesn't hurt anybody because that's what he does. He just sits in his mansion and thinks he's got. Um, Paul, on the other hand, he, he's got sociopathic narcissistic behavior like he you know he just doesn't care about you uh he pretends that he does he, he like offers a shirt off his back when he first meets you he's your buddy buddy but eventually he mm -hmm. gets fatigued from that and ignores your existence and starts taking advantage of you and uh turn my house upside down uh threaten me offer to kill my ex-wife you know uh all that stuff you know and, and the community like there's always somebody down here that does that kind of stuff we can go into jeff berwick but his his stuff is very well known about Jeff Berwick, uh, about his problems with drinking and the ladies. And I don't really need to touch on that because everybody knows. And yeah. no one's trying to, uh, Jeff's not even trying to be active in the community. He just sits up in his his house. He comes out once, maybe twice a year and, you know, doesn't really talk to the community members. So, yeah, that's basically what's going on down here is we're just trying to separate a couple of really, really bad people. Uh, from the community who hurt others, who repeatedly, not just once, repeatedly hurt others in this community. Jason, do you want to add? Um, I was just going to jump in real quick, and uh, I guess kind of uh, it's a leading question. But, um, I, mean, I mean, so when we're talking about these, uh, the, the, I guess, uh, the worst individuals, the ones who violate person and property, um, we're talking about these community lines. Um, I mean, uh, where, do, where, where, do they, where, where do they fall? Is it more so the, uh, you know, like the, uh, I guess, uh, smaller folks, put that in quotes, that sounds bad, like uh, like you, John, and Lily, or is it going to be more like the celebritarians? Like, which side of uh, the community are these, uh, these violators uh, falling upon? Uh, so the... The violators uh, basically are falling on to the humanitarian uh, people in this community. Uh, is that what you're asking, basically? Like uh, celebrity, I guess more more like the celebritarians. Like, are they uh, fall, are they uh, you know more more aligned with um, the, celebr the the celebritarians here in Acapulco, or is it more so the um, I guess just, so uh, they small yeah, smaller smaller folks. Yeah. So. Um, 
there there aren't a lot of celebritarians here. Uh, maybe Catherine Bleich, you guys all might know her. She she lives here for six months out of the year. Um, she just doesn't want to be told what to do. She she's a beautiful woman. Um, she's a, a lovely friend. I know that her and John have had their flaws when they were together, but they're they're they seem a lot different now. So they all that stuff. Uh, she's decided that she doesn't want to be told what to do. So unfortunately, you know, I've had to kind of move it into the the pay mo no mind list until she decides that she's not going to be friends with Paul and Mob Probe anymore. Uh, that that type of stuff. Um, uh, Jeff Jeff never comes down. He's like basically the only libertarian here. I'm guessing. Um, you know, so it's just the smaller folks just trying to sort this out, uh, try to get it all right. And um, Paul, Paul has violated probably eight people in a community and many more on his way down here. And um, he's a really messed up guy. Um, he has value in this world, but like he needs probably to go somewhere else and get help and, and stay somewhere else because this isn't working for him. Like coming down here and taking advantage of all these people and then coercing him when he doesn't get his way. Um, you know, there, there are so many community community members in, in the wake of his his nonsense. Uh, of now, his I, anger. Uh, uh, I I I don't know. Is it, is it kind of a is it kind of a I, and I, this sounds bad to say, like, uh, like obviously, I think the you know the dispute resolution systems. I think that'd be wise to get. I think that'd been wise, wise to get us set up yesterday. But you know, today is better than, you know, tomorrow, and tomorrow is better than the day after tomorrow. But you you, you get the point. Um, um, but uh, I guess is it is it is it kind of a lost cause? Because if you look at um, you know uh, some of the types of people that might be attracted to Acapulco, um, obviously the government's not uh, the, the government's a lot weaker. It's a lot more corrupt. Um, you can you know bribe police. You can um, I mean you can you can do these things right. Um, and uh, also uh, unfortunately, as we kind of alluded to earlier in this in this podcast, uh, unfortunately anarchist libertarians are often targeted for or targeted for scams and and frauds and things things like that. So is it a lost cause in that um, um, these people will, will continue to get to get attracted down here and it'll just be a, a, a consistent problem that needs to be dealt with it, yeah it's going to be maintenance uh so uh you know as as this community starts to grow and starts to understand the idea of routing out the the uh, the people who violate other people multiple times down here uh newcomers will start to hear about it and and start to learn more about it and they'll start to question whether or not acapulco is for them we are a little bit gullible because we want we want to spread our ideas. So we usually invite people in who we think are anarchists, but they they always have someone always is messed up when they come down here and they they just do bad things. They don't understand their actions, you know, or, or how they affect people. So, yeah, it's going to be constant maintenance. But, you know, pretty pretty much we, we like have a welcomer like kind of thing. So everybody makes an effort to go out and meet people when they first get here. So don't be shy if you come here. Uh, reach out to someone in the community, uh, Anarchopoco 24-7-365 or whatever they do it, and, and you know, say, hey, I'm in town, who wants to do something? And someone's going to be like, yeah, I want to meet you. And they'll, they'll go out and drink with you or, or they'll make an effort. And that's so, a uh, I wouldn't fascist book uh, group, by the way. Um, for yeah, and Telegram. You, you'll go to fascist book first, and then they have the Telegram, I think, pinned to the top. So you can also get in Telegram if you don't like using fascist book for that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just like the main group that we use around here. There's also, nah, well, Anarchapoco, I guess a little bit, but that doesn't work so well. The moderators don't moderate so well. Uh, nothing gets ever approved. You know, it just takes a long time. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to be maintenance is basically what it's going to be down here for for a while, trying to get this all settled. But that's my story. When I came down here, I've been violated by two different individuals. One uh kind of like calm me into paying three months rent for him and he turned my house upside down and wrecked these poor people's houses paul i mean these people earn less than four dollars a day and he destroyed like mm -hmm. just destroyed their stuff tried to steal their property my ex-wife made him return some of the stolen property um and then mob probe who likes to interfere with marriages relationships and has no care has has no no class about it um, just as ruthless in his attempted at separating individuals. So those are the two people that I think you should watch out for, uh, personally, who I'm trying to divide from this community, and me and a couple of others, and hopefully it'll work, but we'll see. Yeah. Make sure, 
Yeah, it makes me really sad that I, I'm I'm coming to this because I don't. It, this isn't my goal, is to is to like weed out some people. I mean, I wanted us all to be together, be happy, and understand all of the the principles of freedom together. But it doesn't work that way. It has to be like that, man. Like it, it has to be like that, man. I mean, um, what. <laughs> When it comes to, uh, I mean, that's just security culture. When you when you talk about, uh, you know, vetting individuals who you're going to welcome into your community, um, mm -hmm. that's it's crucial. Uh, it's absolutely crucial. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. some decisions will have to be made, but um, some tough decisions will have to be made. But uh, you know, for the maintenance of of, uh, of such community, I think it's uh, it's worth uh, worthwhile. And uh, I do have some people back here working on the hose. So if you hear background noise, I do uh, do apologize. But uh, yeah, it's just what, what we get for, for the courtyard. <laughs> uh, well, it's uh, 5.30. Uh, Jason, do you want anything to add to Paul Prokert before you go? Because I know that you know uh, quite a bit about Paul. Uh, well, not a lot about Paul, but I know of Paul. I've talked to Paul a few times, and I know a lot of people that have negatively interacted with Paul. And uh, um, not many people have good things to say. You know, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to denounce the guy or anything like that because I've never had any sort of interaction with him, but I will say that it is, it's, it's, kind of, it's almost disheartening how one or two or three individuals can really poison a community. I don't know if poison is the right word, but well, that's, a, uh, that's good or divide poison yeah, or divide d divide or, or, or poison. Or, you know, it's, it's the one bad apple screw, you know, ruins the whole bushel. It, and that, that's really what it comes down to. And and as we discussed uh, in the, the podcast earlier, there needs to be some sort of system in place, you know, uh, defooing or, or uh, disassociation or, or Day whatever. Dep departing from community of origin or destination, it, I don't know. <laughs> something like that. Well, the, the, there needs to be, you know, the, there needs to be some sort of community effort. You know, to to not coerce or anything like that, but uh, through disassociation, you can get people to change their behavior, to to voluntarily ch change their behavior. Um, a, a you know, humans humans are social creatures. We we do need human interaction with other individuals, and if other individuals won't associate with us, right? I mean, that leads us into what either either dep depression or change. You know, and and people will change, uh, given enough, given given that that the absence of human contact. So I mean, it's it's just it's one tool. It's one tool. It's not it's not aggressive. It's not uh, a violation of the nap. It's not anything of that sort. You just you just you voluntarily disassociate with people. Yeah, and that's and that's what I, I was gonna I was gonna speak to that. Just uh, you know, one one quick point. Uh, the the idea that that social coercion, um, just the mm -hmm. the idea of disassociating from dis disassociating and associating with individuals that you um, decide to or decide not to. It's I mean, okay. So so if 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 that's the case, if it really is social coercion, then what other avenues do we have available to us um, to to try to correct bad behavior? I mean. Um, it's <laughs> so. Is, so is it, is it going to be uh, you know things like disassociation, um, or is it going to be um, you know uh, uh, you know state uh, monopolies of uh, of injustice? Um, and well, it's, it's, it's it's not. It's and, and, and I guess the, the third option is just don't don't think about it at all. Um, but that's not uh, that's 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 not realistic um, for 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 an individual who would who would have that sort of a mindset. Um, well, I mean, it's 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 one that's it's not a forward looking one. Um, Mm -hmm. It's just not a forward-looking one. So social coercion, no. It's just um, no, the way, it's, the way it's, that the free human beings interact with each other. As far as I it's see it. it's it's not social coercion because nobody is entitled to your time, right? No, nobody like if, if I, I'm, I'm an individual, nobody is entitled to my time. And if I don't, if I choose not to give this person my time, that's my choice. You know how how is that how is that coercive? Whatever whatever the reason is. Whatever the reason, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I certainly agree. I certainly agree. So we're about twenty five minutes in through this uh, to this Patreon episode. Uh, um, Hansel, was there anything uh, anything else you wanted to uh, uh, anything else you wanted to add or uh, or Booth, and we can kind of uh, begin to uh, to wrap this up. Definitely, yeah. Um, hey guys, come down. It's cheap. <laughs> um, you know, first of all, uh, Anarcho Forco all inclusive stay. 
uh, is like uh, $300 at the hotel for Anno Corporco. Yeah, um, that includes a ticket if you buy it before the 23rd. Uh, Come Lily, down stay, see me. Yeah, Lily was saying that um, the package to stay at the hotel and food and ticket to the event and everything like that was about the same price as the ticket to Anarcho Poco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like if you if you add the ticket price in, but if you buy a room beforehand, before the 23rd, before Christmas, basically, uh, before uh, December 23rd, uh, you get your ticket for free. And you get food, hotel room, three nights stay in a hotel room, and all the amenities that come with the hotel, which is pretty spectacular since it's on the beach. Okay. Yeah, I it's didn't. Down. I didn't know about that. That's a that's yeah. that's a cool little deal. Yeah. Yeah. Just go to uh, uh, tinyurl.com forward slash funny fork or yeah, we can we have some competition. Hands up, if you want to put out your link too. No, it's okay. <laughs> go ahead. All right. All right. So yeah, tinyurl.com forward slash funny fork. Uh, but yeah, uh, come on down. I'll be I'll be down here uh, back in uh, back in February. Uh, you know, if it's uh, all with if it's within my control, I'll be down here. Um, you know, as long as, uh, you know, some crazy family shit doesn't happen, um, then yeah, I'll be back here, uh, in February and, uh, yeah, it doesn't cost, it doesn't cost much to, to, I guess, to, to live down here. It really doesn't. Um, and, uh, I, I think, uh, just come down and give it a shot. Um, you know, even if, uh, even if it's like a freedom festival for you where you know, maybe you come down here once a year, maybe you come down once to check it out. Um, I think it's worth it. Uh, you know, just, uh, coming here and spending some time in, in the second realm known as, uh, Acapulco or more specifically, uh, I guess where we are, Bonville. Uh, so, uh, yeah, five hundred dollars a month to live in Mexico, and that's uh, or at least in Acapulco, and and <clears throat> I mean, that's on the higher end too. I mean, like that's that's the higher end. Like the lower end of van nomadism is the higher end, living in Acapulco. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what Hen- Henzo said earlier, uh, we're talking before the show that the rent is like what ninety dollars a month, U.S. dollars. Yeah, that uh, that place right back there at that black door behind me uh-huh. um yeah it's like 75 dollars a month um to rent that's just a room with a bed and then there's a an outdoor kitchen here that's ours and then there's a kitchen in there that's ours too so um i mean yeah 75 bucks a month you, know, you just have you can have a place to stay and then the foods you can you can eat you know eat out here at the uh the food carts and such or you can save money and, and get food um you know from the grocery store and such but um but yeah i mean it's it's super cheap super cheap and uh definitely definitely do give it a chance um so yeah i think that's uh i think that's about it um thank you guys uh, so much for for joining me for about an hour and a half today it was uh, certainly a lot of fun and um yeah for the patrons thanks for uh, supporting the podcast i know there's been uh i know there hasn't really been the podcast episodes but i've been trying to do at least uh you know one or two live streams a week uh to keep the content uh um coming out uh, for our patrons mm-hmm. and uh yeah, ho- hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, the uh, extortion, the pludgy extortion video that's uh, not public, uh, and then uh, also <laughs> the uh, the uh, hotel room in Kiratoro. The, ho- the uh, hotel room one was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so hopefully you guys uh, uh, enjoyed that, um, and uh, there's certainly certainly be more to come. Um, the documentary's been. I've, I'm I'm working on too many things at once, guys. Like there's 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 I'm working on too many things. Um, but yeah, um, my my first my first. First, I guess the first priority is uh, Liberty Intertype Publications, which is progressing along nicely. And then, uh, yeah, the documentary, I've got all the B-roll on my computer and uh, all that. I just have to sit down and start doing some editing, and I've, I've got to write some script and such, too. So lots, uh, lots to come, bonniepodcast.com. And uh, thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Thank you, Jasons and uh, the Jasons. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and, <laughs> uh, and sign off here. So uh, thanks, guys, and uh, we'll talk soon. Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, 
please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.